Today, we will be talking about the nature nurture debate. So if you're looking at one debate that has been holding strong in the psychology field, it is the nature nurture debate. When we try and understand why humans are the way that they are, why do we have the personality traits and the characteristics that we have? Oftentimes we come back to that core question, is it nature or is it nurture? Is it our genetics? Is it our DNA that we are kind of predisposed to be who we are? Or is it more nurture, our environment, our family, our friends, our school, our culture that impacts who we are and why we act the way that we do today? And so this has been kind of an ongoing debate in the field of psychology and one that is very challenging to research. And you'll find out why as we go through today's video lecture. So we're going to look at kind of three different ways to investigate this debate starting with the evolutionary perspective, moving to the behavioral genetics, and finally to epigenetics. These are kind of three different paths in which psychological researchers have taken in order to draw a conclusion. Is our personality traits characteristics? Is our absence or presence of a mental illness? Is it because of our genetic DNA molecules? Or is it because of an environmental factor um, in our society that causes it. So the earliest and very first kind of view is the evolutionary perspective. And the evolutionary perspective focuses on natural selection and the idea that um, we as human species kind of pass on the traits that are needed in order to survive and to reproduce. So this perspective focuses very much on nature, focuses on how the groups adapt and change in order to survive. Take for an example, um, a study that was done on natural selection of foxes. Um, they wanted to see how long would it take to domesticate a fox? If I took foxes from the wild and wanted them to be domesticated, how can that happen through natural selection? How can we get the genetic modifications to change in a fox in order to get them to be more docile? So what they did is um, about 70 years ago, they took about 100, male, 100 females and 30 male foxes, wild foxes. They specifically chose um, and mated the tamest 20% of those females and 5% of males. And for 57 ger generations later, we have found a much more domesticated fox today. Supporting this evolutionary perspective that our genes will change and we can consistently pass on and um, adjust the genes to get the best possible version um, for natural selection. Today, the focus is more on behavioral genetics and epigenetics. So behavioral genetics focuses on the role that genes and environment play in our behavior. They are interested in knowing what traits come from our genetics, what traits come from our environment. Can we decipher whether or not mental illness is from a gene or from our environment? Is neuroticism from a gene or our environment? Is um, happiness, optimism, is, um, you know, hardworking, is this from a genetic component or a environmental component? So they very much focus on looking at the interaction of both of those things to help us better understand where our traits come from. In order to do this, they um, conduct what are called twin studies and adoption studies. So first we have to understand twins. There's two different types of twins. There's identical twins, monozygotic twins, and there is fraternal diozygotic twins. Monozygotic twins or identical twins come from the same sperm and egg that has been separated and share a placenta. So it's essentially they share the same exact genetic markers because they came from the same fertilized egg. Fraternal twins, which is about two thirds of twins, are um, come from two different eggs and sperm. So they then have their own separate placenta. They have their own separate DNA. Fraternal twins share the same DNA like siblings would share, 
versus identical twins share the exact same DNA because they come literally from the same fertilized egg versus fraternal twins come from two different fertilized eggs. So their DNA structure is a little bit different, but they are in, you know, essentially they are in the same womb, different placentas, but in the same womb and they are in the same environment. So twin studies and adoption studies are really helpful in this realm. Ethically, obviously we can't take twins and have them be raised in separate environments for our own research purposes. Obviously that would be unethical. However, there are many cases of adoption studies um, where we are able to take twins who have been separated at birth and study what is the impact on their different environments versus their genetic predisposition. So in adoption studies, I'm able to identify, okay, if I have identical twins that are reared in separate environments and they share certain commonalities, if I find enough of those throughout my research, I'm going to see that there's more genetic link to that particular personality trait or that particular um, uh, mental illness. I also can do the same with twin studies. If I study um, the similarities and personality traits of um, identical twins versus fraternal twins, and if I see that there is more similarity in a certain personality trait or mental illness on identical versus fraternal twins, I can see that genetic plays more of a role than environmental because they share exact genes versus fraternal don't share the same genes. So these types of studies help us to try and decipher as much as possible what personality traits, what mental illness, what characteristics come from our genes versus our environment. Um, and oftentimes, as we will learn throughout the class, we're going to see what types of personality traits and characteristics have more of a genetic component, which ones have more of an environmental component. The last one is epigenetics. And epigenetics instead looks at how environmental factors can modify gene expression. So epigenetics focuses on diet, stress, toxins, and how those things can actually adjust, turn on or off, change our DNA makeup. So if you see in this picture, for example, um, a woman who smokes while pregnant, Epigenetics is going to look at the changes that are going to happen both within herself. It's going to change the DNA of her unborn child that is in her womb, as well as it's going to change her daughter's reproductive cells for when she potentially has a child in the future. So um, behavioral genetics, again, focuses on the personality traits and characteristics and where those come from. Epigenetics look more at environmental factors and how those modify our genes to impact us. So diet, stress, toxins, how do those turn on and off the genes that we already have? Big takeaway, I think in the field of psychology that we would say is that nurture works on what nature provides. Nobody would argue that we are a combination of nature and nurture. Some things we have found come more from nature, some have come more from nurture, but big picture, Nurture works on what nature provides. And so it is a combination of those two things that impact how we behave.